seat. Now, we're going to just kick this off right now, man. We're talking about the, the rock box, the, uh, the cajon, its proper name. We'll go through all the details of how that came about, how they named that. But um, just quickly, man, what, how, what was that bass sound you were doing there? Well, this is the, uh, the bass pedal attachment. Um, this works like an acoustic bass drum. You use your heel. It's a subtle thing, you know, you can make it too loud, but you just got to make it a lot of nice little bass sound. And it fills in that area of the rhythm when you're playing guitar, it gives it a much fuller sound. Fully sounds like a kick drum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With that element of snare, if you're actually kicking the kick drum, the real snare drum would be getting that vibration as well, so it's yeah. even getting that in there. That's the truth, Peter, yeah. <laughs> Well, g'day guys, uh, welcome to the Peter Montgomery Show. I'm here with a special episode with uh, Steve Ramsey. How are you going, Steve? Good, Peter. Nice to meet you, mate. Uh, going good. Now, listen, uh, being a huge fan of internet marketing and video and all that sort of stuff, uh, I actually was looking for a, a cajon, which is a, a box instrument, which is what we're going to be talking about today. And in my searches, I found a great video uh, with our star of the show, Steve, and uh, he was demonstrating the ones that he actually builds. So can you just tell us briefly what a cajon is, maybe where the name came from, and uh, we'll dig back and get your story of how you actually started building it. Yeah, sure, Peter. Well, cajon stems from the word caja, which means box in Spanish. So that's where the, the word cajon comes from. It's not uh, a lot of people pronounce it as cajon or uh, different things, cajun, different things like that, but really the Spanish pronunciation is Cajon, uh, so that's how you pronounce it. So cajon means draw in Spanish, draw, box, uh, box drum. Mm -hmm. And so when, uh, when did you first discover these instruments? I discovered it about 10 years ago. I went to a party at Avalon and there was a guy with a full piece band, uh, keyboards, guitars, bass guitar, and this guy sitting on a box and, and sounded amazing. Uh, his name was Mark Stewart. Later on down the track, I found out that uh, that Mark had a um, a business called uh, Drum Cafe or something like that. Sorry, Mark, I can't remember the name of the actual business at the moment. But you go around to schools demonstrating 50 different types of drums. He was fantastic. He used to be road crew for Deep Purple or something, and you know try out their drums before uh, before they perform. Mm -hmm. So he was a great drummer. Still is. So, so you're at the party that long. He introduced the, the cajon to me. As soon as the, the break was on, I raced up to him and said, what, what is this thing? Because I've never, I've been playing uh, music for 30 years, or more than that, you know, maybe, uh, well, yeah, no, about 30 years at the time, and I'd never seen a cajon before in my travels. I hadn't seen one in, in concert, I hadn't seen friends with one, and, you know, musos hang out together, so we know what each other's got. So it was, uh, it was exciting, and that's when I decided this is what I want to do. So you saw the drum there, you saw him playing it, it was just like, blew your mind. Um, how were your first efforts in, in making one of them? What, what happened there? Terrible, <laughs> terrible. I thought it was going to be easy because I was a ship's joiner. Uh, that was my trade, and I thought, ah, it's a box. You know, I can make a box. Um, I'd made guitars before. So... Uh, but surprisingly, it was a lot more difficult to get a good sounding drum because it's, uh, it's simple in the manufacture, but it's hard to get all the different sounds. You know, you've got to get the snare, you've got to get the bass right, you've got to have all those tones in between. So it's actually a really complex instrument, subtly complex, to, mm -hmm. get, to get that full range of, um, or try and get that full range of the drum kit. Now that first one that you made, mm. uh, I mean, did it did it inspire you to go? You know, did you learn? What no, you no, no, no. I'm just I'm tenacious, Peter. <laughs> I, I did ten, and uh, the first ten were pretty rubbishy, and then I kept on doing it because I really wanted to make a good sounding drum. Apart from the fact that you know I'm tenacious, I just wanted to have it as part of my uh, part of my musical kit. You know, like my flute, my guitars. And, and the idea of this acoustic drum box sitting in the lounge room sounded just a great idea. I wanted to have a, um, um, a functional piece of furniture that could sit in the lounge room, you could have books on it, and when someone like you came around for, for a jam, I can just pull it out, it's a seat, 
It's a drum kit all in one. Mm. What a fantastic bit of furniture to have in your lounge room. Yeah, Lovely. as a musician, yeah, yeah. I totally yeah, I dig it. And That's portable, awesome. you know. You don't have to, as a, being an acoustic guitarist primarily, um, it's too hard to jam. You can't jam with a drum kit. You'd have to amplify with the guitars and that. This thing just you know, fits in the car well too, which yeah. Yeah, in the Take back seat, it down the beach, pick it up with one hand. Yeah. Now, most people, you know, they see something they like, they go and buy one. Mm. You made a whole stack of them. <laughs> you didn't just go and go, well, what did you get there? Oh, I'm going to go and get one of those. It's a little bit different to go out and say, I'm going to actually make one. There's something a little bit deeper in behind the story of you, know, you well, making this thing. Why did you want to make I one? I was looking for a new business. Yeah. So that was one thing. Is I was looking for a new business and... Um, it seemed to fit the criteria of what I'd like to do as a business. I was a musician, I was a ship's joiner, it was a unique product that fitted uh, the parameters of what I was looking for in business. So I thought, yeah, let's explore this, mm -hmm. let's, let's go into it down the rabbit hole. Yeah, and, and uh, how long has that been now? So from that first time still that you went digging, to the party... Man, still digging, still <laughs> digging. Yeah, yeah. But from that first party, that first party you went to, what year was... Roughly what year was that? Oh, oh, that would have been 10 years ago. 10 years ago. So by the time you got to you know, Cajon number 10, yeah. how, how long was that time? Oh, Cajon number 10 happened in about you know, two, three weeks. Oh, right, so you dug in I straight away. I just dug in and yeah. I was going crazy with, uh, with making, I was going Cajon crazy. And, and uh, I uh, rang up Mark Stewart, this guy that I met at the party, and I said, oh, look, can you, because I couldn't play. You know, I was a guitarist, but mm. I couldn't play the drums to save myself. Yeah. So I got Mark to come around and test them out. And he went, uh, sort of, okay, you know, all right. And, uh, he's, he's, he wasn't well, too impressed. What's wrong with them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, they just asked for criticism, and he was the devil's advocate. He yep. gave me some good criticism, and... Uh, I, I looked at what else was available. I went to different um, music shops and saw what they had. Tried theirs out. Just tried to get that basic beat to start off with. I just tried to uh, hit the bass and hit the snare. And the rest of the, the other bits, the paradiddles and all the intricacies of drumming, I didn't worry about. I just wanted some pure, clean, beautiful sounds. Mm. So, so how long did it take to get to the first one where you went, ah, I'm on, I'm on the right track now? Uh, You're still on the right track, still aiming for that, that one, are you? Uh, no, no, I feel like I've got there. I feel yeah. like I've got to the point where um, it's a beautiful sounding drum now. Mm. And um, it's well made, um, there's no... Um, Nothing that you know. There's nothing that's going to fall off it. It's it's well made. It's solid. It sounds great. It's got good variation. Great snare. Great bass. So I'm, I'm pretty well done with the um, R and D. Yeah. So uh, you. But I'm making attachments and things like that. As little things, I think oh, wouldn't it be nice if I had a foot high hat or a, a little clicker or something like yeah, that. Yeah. The the extra bit. Now you've got the design sort of right where you want it. Yeah. Uh, it's getting the the extra little bits now. So yeah, the, the last things we're doing, things like this, getting this uh, design on the front, mm -hmm. so, it would, um, so it was affordable to do it, so it looked great, so it fitted in with the timber and, mm. and stuff like that. So this was probably, the first thing was the sound, um, the second thing that came along was trying to make them strong, so that, that you know, there was, uh, you know, someone from... 40 kilos to 200 kilos could sit on. Now, someone 200 kilos could sit on this drum. Yeah. Um, so I wanted it. So, you know, uh, it would suit everybody. And, and then the last thing was it, I wanted it to be a work of art in the house. Because mm. I came from a sculptural background. Before this job, I had this gallery up in Byron Bay that I was telling you about before. And, yeah. Uh, and so that was the thing. It had to, have, had to be a functional, strong piece of furniture had to be a, a kick-ass musical instrument and then I wanted to make it a functional piece of art as well so you could yeah. so it look beautiful in the house. Okay, now that kind of brings me to how I actually found you, just that, that little piece there because I was up in uh, Byron Bay or my parents live in Ballina and I actually filmed the last episode at the, the Channon Markets there um, and I was in one of the shops in Byron Bay and I saw one 
and I've seen them before, I, I knew what they mm. were. Mm. And while I was playing with it, um, it was just like, wow, this is, this is really cool. And I've got this little project that I'm doing called Six Hour Tracks, where it's basically you, you record your, your demo tracks from start to finish inside six hours. And I thought this would be perfect uh, for that job, like get really, really good drum sounds mm. like quickly and loop it and do all that sort of stuff. So it, just the idea of it, it struck me, well, that'll, that'll do that job I want. Now, being a musician too and liking uh, good instruments versus just, hey, that'll be fun. Mm. Um, I thought, okay, well, it was $100. I thought, yeah, this is such a good instrument. I'm sure there's like a real good quality instrument versus a piece of toy percussion. So that's when I jumped on the net and I typed Cajon into YouTube and up came a, a few of your videos and it was like, um, it was, you told the story in one of your, your videos like about the Cajon, like you, you filmed it in a studio and that's what I was looking for. I was looking for, I want to hear how it sounds, but I want to know what makes a good Cajon versus a piece of toy percussion. So can you, now I want to make that video that I was looking for, can you tell me now what makes a good Cajon over a, a toy piece of percussion? A lot of things, but a lot of things, uh, everything starts off with the right timber, the right dimensions, the right finish, the right snare system inside, um, the craftsmanship that goes into it, a whole combination, like what makes any good instrument. You know, it starts off like you've got a, a Fender uh, bass back here. Mm -hmm. You've got to have you know, a beautiful neck, good pickups, you know, all nice designs. Yeah. What do I do about this phone? Do I? Yeah, now that's got. I mean, you can just you can answer. This is going to go through. This is going to go for a little bit. So we'll just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. Sorry, that. Yeah. Oh, it's off. That's no, not. Hello, Steve here. G'day Ali, I'm just doing an interview. This is my friend Ali from Byron Bay. <laughs> it's just rang up. We're doing a video interview uh, with uh, friend Peter here. And uh, so uh, you're on the interview now too. Would you like to say a word to the people? <laughs> the world? No, don't want to say No comment. No, <laughs> no comment. comment. All right, I'll ring you back later. Bye-bye. She's at least to live with her. She lives like a separate part. Right. Mm. All right, so um, yeah, back into you know, good pickups, good neck, and all that sort of stuff. All the components make a good good design. It was a really uh, it was really paramount in in my my drum. Something that what I think may, made my drum uh, what I think makes it special is to be able to tune the snare up to have a real versatile uh, snare system that um, allows you to minutely tune it to move it and position it just where you need it and that's the big thing mm. that's one of the most important things but also timbers you know I've tried so many different timbers over the uh, over the years 10 years of making each drum myself and um, the timbers make a big difference the finish makes a big difference if you put one coat of, uh, of uh, urethane on or or five coats of urethane on, that'll make a big difference to the sound. You know, did you ever hear the Beatles? Uh, mm. They used to get the Hofner guitars made without any finish at all. Right. They just play raw timber guitars. And what, what, how did that affect the sound there? What did they like about that? Um, I guess it gave a more organic finish because you're not putting a, a plastic coating upon the timber, mm. you're getting that resonance of the timber. Um, um, Stradivarius the violin makers would have used probably shellac or French polish on their instruments and, and French polish gets very hard and almost crystallises um, so that would give a different sound to uh, you know urethane or the common finishes that instruments get these days mm. French polish is a, is a big thing it takes quite a long time to put on so yeah. it's something with my drums it's uh, I need to make it affordable but I want it to be beautiful quality as well. So it's it's been a balance, you know, getting those things. Yeah, that's, and that's what I was looking for as a musician. Like, I, I had very specific tastes in what I was after. And so I didn't only watch your video. So if your video captivated me, it caught my attention. I went, here's a guy that makes them. He, he, I definitely got to get on the phone with him at some point. And, um, but the difference about your, your ones that I looked to, because I went to other videos to compare. So I went looking for my search to find out which one would be the most suited to me. And what I liked about yours was, you know, the idea that the, it's the rock box, it's the boom, boom, ka, mm. that that kick and snare, which is the first thing you were you were chasing when well, you when you were going for it. That was the other thing is that I actually um, 
I devised my own technique of playing. So I could isolate, because of my tuning system with the snare, I can isolate the snare while I'm hitting the bass. So mm. I get definition between the tones. And that's a biggie. That's, yeah, a, that's, that's, what I was that's, that's a biggie. That's what gives you that drum kit sound rather than that typical flamenco cajon sound or that Latin American sound. So that's, that's, a, that's a big difference between my drum and all the others mm. that we play. Yeah, cause it, and that's when I was looking at those videos, yeah, it seemed like a softer, I don't know, the way I describe it is those egg shakers, musicians don't understand those mm. egg shakers. Mm. The snare was kind of more of a tone of those egg shakers mm. rather than a, 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 a good, hard, cracking mm. kind of snare. Mm. Um, and yeah, and the style of playing that is needed for those is very different to getting a good fat beat out, an ACDC beat or something like that if you want totally. to go that way, or a good yeah, funk yeah. beat. Um, so yeah, yours drew me in that way. So let's talk about the, the actual cajons themselves now that you've got. You've got the, what are your models? What are the basic models? I've got three models at the moment. Um, you're sitting on the standard rock box. Yep. That one's made of all cedar plywood. Um, and it gives a mellow sound. Um, it's smaller than the Pro model. It's got limitations uh, as far as it has a certain weight limit, like about 105 kilos. Mm -hmm. so I'm pretty safe on this one. Yeah, you're fine. You could probably put, I could probably sit on it or stand on your shoulders and it'd be fine. Yeah. But, but, but I'd say 105 kilos is, is the weight limit for that. Yeah. Um, so it's a more mellow sound, and it doesn't have the variation that the Pro model does. Um, different timbers, different size, same snare system, but you know. Mm, it is what it is. Different is. Yeah. And so, so, and the one that you're sitting on. So this one's the Pro model, which is exactly the same as the Deluxe model. The only difference between the Deluxe and the Pro model is that the um, the Deluxe has the dovetail joints. It has an extended warranty of five years. Mm. Now, when I say five years, I've had my drum down there for uh, I don't know, probably seven or eight years, my, my template, and I reckon it'll last for another hundred years. Mm. There's just no sign, apart from scuff marks and dents in it, and I use it in the workshop to put hammers on and chisels, <laughs> and I treat it like rubbish, but it sounds just as good as the day I made it, and I mm. thought, I love this drum, that's going to be my template. So every drum that I make, I measure off that template. Mm. And so I can keep a certain standard. And now, look, there's variations between the drums, but if I want to, I can get really close to that drum downstairs, mm. to the point where most people probably wouldn't hear the difference. But after making hundreds of them, I, I sort of... Uh, yeah, well, I can hear slight differences, you know, when I was talking about the snare resonating before mm. and just lasting a little bit longer when you're doing the paradiddles and things. Yeah, so it took 10 years to create that template. You really have 10 years and hundreds of cajons to, Lots of mistakes. to get to that point. Lots of mistakes. And now they're all measured up against that one. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, you know, once I made that one, which was like seven years ago, they were all measured from that one. But there were still mistakes to be made, and yeah. each mistake... I try and learn from it. Yeah. Okay. And now the other one, uh, there's one behind us there. That's well, yeah, that's the, that's the Pro model. Um, We're going to be capturing shots the, of all this these. This has got the new logo on the front. So. We'll capture some shots. I can sort of edit them in. Yeah. After. So the, the same size, same same timber, same size. The only difference is is the uh, the dovetail joinery on the side, which is, uh, you know, if you know anything about dovetail boxes, they used to be made all by hand and they would last hundreds of years. Mm. Um, and that's... I'd like, to, I'd like to see my product last hundreds of years. It'd yeah. Be great. Yeah, so you like, you know, they get those pianos It's like on. your videos, you know. You'll be, <laughs> 200 years' time, you'll be, you know, your video will be on YouTube. Yeah, or if the internet's still around, and we haven't exploded <laughs> yeah. ourselves in, yeah, yeah. by that point. Yeah. yeah, so it's kind of like, you know, the, the idea of a piano, you know, like we used to have... I had a baby grand piano at one stage that was like you know, 60 years old, and they said, you know, it's only kind of reached maybe half life. Mm. You know, they say like average life of a good piano is about 100 years, mm. where it will sound good for that whole period of time. Um, so that, that's kind of what well, you're, you're looking for. Instruments actually, timber instruments actually should get better mm. over the years because the uh, timber will become, um, you know, when timber's cut, it's got sap in it, 
it needs to season. Mm. Um, uh, eventually, if you get really well seasoned timber, it becomes crystallised, almost. Yeah. Uh, uh, and um, and it has a uh, it improves in its acoustic sound. Um, so, yeah, timber instruments should get better over the years mm. if they're kept in you know if they're not left out in the rain or something like that. Yeah. yeah. But inside and keeping, I mean, I've taken I went to the Byron Blade Blues Festival to test one of my drums off, and I was playing in the mud. <laughs> and uh, people must have thought I was crazy, <laughs> but it's Byron Bay, you can get yeah. away with it up there. And uh, as a test, I was sitting this, sitting my drum in about, I don't know, uh, in a hundred mil of, uh, of mud and playing. I don't know if it could have even improved the sound, you know? <laughs> but it was, uh, it was interesting. Yeah. All right, now, so look, I'm looking for a cajon, right? Mm. Um, what would someone need to know, just, just a real basic, just a quick rundown of what makes a good one. So we talked about you know, the timbers, all the variations, all those different things. Uh, or how do you pick the right cajon for you, I guess, and probably might be a better question. Um, oh, well, so I'm a, about to pick one. A, what, what I guess, I to be I guess you have to think about what music you play to start yeah. off. What music do you like? So if you like, um, yeah. what do you like? What do you mm. like? Yeah, I, I like funky stuff. I'm a bass okay. player. Thank you. Chili peppers, uh, yeah, that kind of thing. Well, so in in that in that sort of uh, genre of music, they usually play a drum kit. Mm. So I'd be looking for a con that sounded like a drum kit. Yeah. And um, you've come to the right place, better. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, I, I did my research. So that's yeah, the thing, guys. That's that's what's so great about video I online. Can't think of any you can do your research. You get one that sounds like a drum kit, like this one. Although yeah. Schlagwerk, this is a little promo for Schlagwerk. You know, I'm not just promoting my own drum, yeah. they do make a, a, a good drum. Not as good as mine. <laughs> <laughs> and it all comes down to uh, being able to tune the snare up properly. Mm. And, uh, and that's the secret. It's like tuning a guitar. You know if your guitar is out of tune slightly, if, um, if the, um, the vibration is not right on the guitar and the resonance isn't right, it just doesn't ring. Mm. You know, it doesn't sound beautiful. Same with the drum. You know, you've got to have the tuning perfectly in this drum will let you do that. If you were going to play, if you wanted flamenco music, I would say go to another, you know, find another uh, type of drum, find another cajon. Yeah. And there's some good, really good flamenco uh, cajons out there. Schlagwerk make, make one too. They're a German company. Yeah. Um, and there's quite a few. There's, there's, there's dozens of... Uh, Horn manufacturers, in, probably just in Spain yeah. and Peru, um, their traditional instrument, their, their national instrument is cajon. Mm. Uh, so they have, but they have, uh, they play a style of music called festejo. Now, if I'm pronouncing that right, Peruvians, please don't, uh, <laughs> don't, don't kill me for it. But festejo music is like folk, Peruvian folk music, and they have their own style of cajon for that music. It doesn't yeah. generally have a snare in it. Right. So the, the flamenco cajons are more that, you know, that when you were talking about that egg shaker, yeah. that's the flamenco sound. That's yeah. that, and they generally have, um, guitar-wise, um, a certain um, type of structure where they have guitar-wise sitting behind the face of the drum. Yeah. The problem with that I find is whether you hit the bass, if you hit the bass you're going to get a snare, if you hit anywhere you're going to get a snare sound because the wires go from all the way up and down. Mm. And you can't muffle it, you can't sort of stick your hand over the snare and dampen that snare sound and just get a really clean bass. Yeah. So that's, that's those, those type of uh, very uh, uh, traditional sort of flamenco cajons. Yeah, so but, yeah, and that's what drew me into yours. That yours was actually specialised to exactly what I was looking for. Yeah, which is yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that's that's how I picked you you over everyone else. And I thought better than that, you're in Manly, you're in Sydney. I can actually go there and and we can make an episode. And, well, that and, came from absolutely uh, from nothing. You know, <laughs> from not having any formal training of how to play a cajon. Yeah, or how to make a cajon. It came from my desire as a guitarist to want to have a box drum that would be like a drum kit in mm. the house. 
So as I said, I've designed my own technique on how to play um, uh, that, that, that suited me. Yeah, out of your own need. You, out of my you own developed need. the yeah, product that yeah. was yeah, perfect for that job. Necessity is the mother of invention. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're actually going to um, head down to the workshop and have a quick look. No trade secrets revealed, but we're going to look around at some of the, the stuff that um, you've got going on down there. So do you want to head down to the workshop? And we'll sure. Yeah, let's do it. Rockbox World. So this is, this is the, uh, the workshop. And so, yeah, you point things out and tell me what so, to look at. Okay, well, here we have... Uh, years of different uh, cajons, new ones as you can see these, the ones with the new logo on the front Yep. Um, and we have some standard models that are in different stages of production, so these ones have you know, halfway through and we've got some smaller ones that I've these are um, prototypes that I've been making testing out, this one's got a pickup in it which one's that? This one here, you can see it's got a little piezo pickup in it. Oh, awesome. Uh, so piezo pickup, can you just explain quickly, that is, I know it's something to do with when you hit, it actually yeah, makes the electrical yeah, current yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if I could explain what a piezo pickup in is. This is a little sh um, shaler uh, oyster pickup. Yep. So it basically attaches to the timber and um, it actually doesn't produce a very good sound, but it's, uh, it's okay. It's something there. It's something. It, look, these were prototypes. That was yep. the whole thing. A lot of these back here, see these ones over here, they've got all these signatures. They're from the Byron Bay Festival. You can, yep. And uh, some great signatures there. Is this the one that went in the mud? Uh, one of them is, yeah. One of them is. There's a couple of them. So this one's got signatures as well. That was Home Bank. Yep. I think that was the Byron Bay Festival. And there's another one there. With, um, this is the end of the the. the uh, this is just sort of all rubbishy sort of stuff, you know. You got some tambourines up there, bits of storage stuff. Yeah, yeah. it's a garage. Yeah, I love the as garage we, production workshop. It's awesome. As we come, here's a new prototype that I've been working on of a little bongo that that, uh, that fits onto your knee. This is prototype stage. Yep, but. Um, it's an interesting little prototype. It allows you to be playing the, the cajon, or the rock box. Yep. And also, you can uh, have this attached to your knee and be playing this little bongo, high-pitched sort of thing. That's awesome. I like that. Um, we've got a one-string banjo over there on the wall. Uh, there we go. <laughs> uh, Different variations of tools here, glue stuff. This is my main workbench where I make everything. It's got a router underneath, and then here you can see down here. You've got a router set up there that comes out, and then I can put the saw in there and have a vacuum over here. It's all really neat and compact. This is actually, I reckon, this is a fantastic bench. Um, it's amazing, actually. I yeah. designed this bench. It's got a trial, it's got a vice up here, so I can clamp stuff on with my knee. So that's really, really quick. It's got another vice over the back here yep. that I can clamp stuff here, put it in there. I can put pegs up here and I can put uh, some sort of piece of timber and clamp long pieces of wood in this area here. So it has everything, you know, it has, um, has the router, the saw, the clamps, uh, the, uh, yeah, and I put other things on top of it like you know, little uh, grinders and linishes and stuff like that. Well, you've done well to develop like you know, all these different things that you need to do for the up. systems into like such a small, a small space. Area. That's yeah. excellent. And this will go in the car. <laughs> I can actually travel with this thing. So it's yeah. Timber over there for okay, different, so different uh, rock box designs. Uh, there's a little bench that I. Oh, that's what you're showing me earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the same, using the same technique as of this, as printing directly onto the timber. So that was a big thing coming up with that. Was that being that. Yeah, and it works that. best with the, uh, uh, the black and white. So that photo was taken just down, down at the South, beach? South Stain. It's a local uh, female surfer. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it was just a beautiful day out in the surf. I was going to give another shot of that. This is the, the stool here. Yeah, just a, sort of like a, a bench. Robust sort of bench. That's cool. And uh, what else? What else have I got? Uh, that's about it, but... Cool. Well, let's um, let's go up, upstairs and have a jam. I'm gonna, I've got my bass and Sounds some gear here, yeah, and yeah. Uh, we'll get some cajon in action, and yeah. uh, it'll take from there. Great. We've just come up from the workshop, yeah. and we're just talking about um, yeah, the difference between the yeah the hundred dollar cajon and the five hundred dollar cajon. So the toy instrument versus the, the real the real deal. So yeah, just yeah. Well, it's it's like without even bringing the, the, the instrument cajon, any musical instrument. The way I think of it is the better, better the instrument, uh, the better sound it will produce from either professional or learner or amateur. And the thing is that it will, um, it will inspire you to play that instrument, even though you know nothing about how to play the instrument. If you just play one G chord out of a beautiful guitar, it's going to inspire you to learn a C chord mm. and then a D chord and continue and get you back onto that guitar because it sounds so good. Whereas if you have a cheap guitar that can't be tuned, that has a horrible neck, that is awkward to play, learning it is not a pleasure. Mm. And that's the thing. So, you know, buy the best you can afford. Buy, you know, have a, have a play around with the instrument if you can. Tap it, see if you like it, and um, you've really got to try a few instruments. And I guess go for one that has a good reputation, where you know someone that has you know, a beautiful guitar, and you go, oh, that sounds fantastic. And, you know. Yeah, yeah, well, those, those friend recommendations, you know, well, you saw someone at a party, you became friends later, well, but you saw right. that and went, that's that right. sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know anything about it, but I want one. Yeah, I want exactly, one. Then exactly. But, uh, yeah, you know, um, generally better quality, better sounding instruments, they uh, inspire you to play, to practice, mm -hmm. and to get better. Whereas if you have a crappy instrument, it's not going to inspire you. Right? Yeah, well, that, that's a lesson for, for parents out there that, it is, that it want is. to buy uh, the kids a cheap guitar. Oh, I'll just get them a cheap guitar to learn yeah. on. It's like, no, it get, them the, get them the them best off. guitar you can afford. And they'll be wanting to play. It can play. actually turn you off playing, learning how to play music. Mm. Um, and that's what it can do. If you get a bad instrument, um, you go, oh, this sounds like crap. I'm not a drummer or I'm never going to be a guitarist. Uh, and it's, it could be partly the, the instrument they're playing. Mm. Well, today we're back and uh, here with Steve Ramsey, uh, the, the builder of, of the rock box Cajon. And uh, so what one are you sitting on there? I'm sitting on the pro version. Uh, pro model, Peter. Okay, so that's the pro, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's going to jam some bass, and uh, we'll see what comes of it. Yeah, sounds great. <laughs> Let's go. So, um, I'll just kick some. My favourite up. part. <laughs> <laughs> to get my foot in there and do some of the, uh, I guess it's a, that's a good stable beat, kick, snare, kick, snare. Mm. But, uh
so I'm going the the, the pro. Yep. Which good. is the um, glad to hear it. Now that's yeah. So you got your standard. You got your your deluxe with the dovetail joints. Yep. But for my purposes, uh, this is the one that I've had my eye on the whole time I've been here. Yeah. Yep. Um, now just a few few tips. Can I get some tips on just quickly looking for the sounds that I'm aiming for? So if someone's watching this and now I get one like. Now, what do I do to play it right? How do I pick my sound? So, well, and you tuned it from my left hand. That's now. what I was about to say. We tuned it so the snare. We've decided that you feel comfortable hitting the bass with your right hand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and I've told you about the bass. The bass, the most deepest bass note in the drum, is going to be fingertips on the centre of the drum. Okay. So, about, so about, about there. About there. If you yeah. go any lower than that, the pitch will go higher. Yeah. You, know, you see some people going down like this and think they're going to get, the lower they go on the drum, they're going to get a lower bass. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> it doesn't work the way it is. The deepest note in the, in the drum is right in the centre. So if you hit your fingertips, so what I was saying before, yeah. you put your hand over the snare, you're dampening the snare. You're keeping your forearm parallel to the face of this drum. So it's basically the same angle. Yeah. You're bending at the hips, you're doing what I said, you're bending the cajon up a little bit, so you've got your ergonomics, you've got to relax your shoulder a little bit, yeah? So you might have to bring that outside a little bit. That's good, that's excellent, yeah. beautiful. Good posture, sort of like uh, Kung Fu Karate, yeah. or stance. Filling in the stance. Yeah, you can yeah. do that, uh, what's that new song with the guy? Uh, Gangnam Style. Yeah, that's Here we go. the Kong, Kong Gangnam Style. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, okay, so you've got the right posture, you've got to be relaxed drumming, so you've got to keep your shoulders nice and relaxed. Mm -hmm. and and all your flexibility comes from here, and it's a balancing. It's yeah. Like rock in the box. Yeah, rock in the, rock box. In the box. Right, eh? right in a rocking chair. So, hitting the bass, coming down, it doesn't have to be in the center. So you can, you'll can, actually find you get a good bass probably where you had your hand there. Yep. Come up a little bit. And you're hitting, using this part here, these parts of your fingers, as the hammer head or the, the beater. So from, from that point down, is yeah, it like that's a bigger of a kick drum? Emphasize the, the hit. So you're using, hinging off the, uh, the, the wrist here, mm -hmm. and trying to dampen the snare at the same time so you get clarity of that bass, which you are. Yeah. And, and it's almost like, it's not about hitting hard to get a big bass sound, it's hitting softer is giving me more clarity. music in my notes. More clarity, more, more clarity. definition of the sound. You're getting rid of that snare sound. The softer you hit it, You'll get. So you can hear the difference between what we're recording now. It's mm. interesting because you do the bass there and listen to this, the bass on this one. Now you do it. This just sounds like a kick drum, like, and it's got the, the really full sound. Well, I think this one sounds like a, a Ludwig kick drum. It's it's more denser. It's um, a different tone. Yeah. More damp and broad. And it's one of those things, it's a preference. It's like they're, they're all good. Yeah. It's like what sound suits what well, you want to do. Is, this, is, this one comes with no warranty. Yeah. Carpet yeah. warranty, I've heard called that. As soon as it leaves the carpet, it's out of warranty. That's right. As soon as you give me the money, the warranty's gone. Yeah. So this yeah. one comes with no warranty. And, but in saying that, I've told you I've had three returns. From things that people have done, I've told them not to do. They yeah. take it to a party, and someone drunk's got on, built the hell out of it, put their fist through the face of the drum, or something like that. Yeah. Otherwise, in it, ten years. <laughs> yeah, it's not in, much in ten all. years, it's a uh, pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's like smashing your car and taking it to the dealer, going, "Hey, my car's broken." Yeah, you smashed it, dude. That's yeah. Right. yeah. Okay, so you've got the bass happening there, and keeping that flat. Beautiful. As soon as you get it right, you just feel it. Yeah. yeah. Real deep note. I don't know how it's going through on the recording, but yeah. here it's a real nice deep note. It's a really lovely bass. And so if you move that across into the centre, <laughs> even, even more so. You That's where it is. That's a thumper. Okay, so keeping your hand on the bass like that, try the snare. So uh, you said uh, from the knuckles. About the knuckles, yeah. Uh, As I release my hand, I get it's just a different tone. That's right. It's almost like a snare sound without that extra, you know, that with snare, drummers put the, the ring of an old drum skin around the snare to dampen it a bit. Yeah, yeah. So it's like when you loosen your bass hand, it's like you've taken that ring off. Of, it's 
There's different sounds. It's like doing the slap bass, you know, rather than the, the, the plucking. There's different ways of hitting a drum. Yeah. Uh, you can hit it, you know, flat on, or you can mm. let it come off a little bit. There's different ways of hitting, different tensions on the hand, um, all sorts of things that give really a different sound. So, how would I look for the snare sound, you know, looking for, for the variations? Okay. We'll start off, as I said, about the knuckle, about the same height as the, uh, the edge of the drum. Yep. Keep your, your forearm and hand roughly parallel, keeping your shoulder down. So you might have to go out that way a little bit. Yeah, more. okay. And you're flexing the wrist a little bit and the forearm a little bit too, so you get a bit of aha. As soon as I copy your movements, yeah, I'm watching yeah. you do it, as soon as I copy that, it tells me what I need to do. Well, that's what videos are so good about. You look yeah. at things and just, he's doing that. You just parrot fashion, mimic it. Keep your hand off, you're going to take a different sound. Take your hand slightly off, you're going to even. So, even the amount of pressure that your hands on the bass will give you a different sound. It's kind of like a, the talking drums, you know? The, totally, the totally, totally. So, you know, you see people with the. Uh, Congas or something, they'll put their elbow on and, yeah. and tap the skin as they So, same thing with this. Everything is just as beautiful as you can get your foot into it. And that's, uh, that really makes it into a talking drum. Okay, get a little bit lighter with the snare, so a little bit more finesse with the snare. Get me more rattle when I do that. A bit that. flatter with the, uh, the hand on the bass. Absolutely, it's it's time on and practice. You're not going to get on this instrument, learn the technique, and get great sounds within within minutes. Mm. I uh, I had the, some of the best drummers in the world come to my workshop, you know, that Academy Award winning sort of drummers. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and you sounded just as good. Yeah, maybe even a bit better. Getting the sounds <laughs> in there. And, and that's you won't mention any names. Yeah, but you can if you want. It's a, my show is pretty open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you want to get into trouble, that is. Yeah, yeah. No, but that's, that's uh, yeah, you, it's, it's they, an instrument they, you can they really They know grow. who they are. Yeah. No, it's really an instrument you can grow with. Like, you can, it really gets absorbed. Totally. It's when it becomes muscle memory, it's just, yeah. it's like well, any instrument. You, know, you, really feel it. you were talking about me doing uh, reggae rhythms before. Yeah. I'm still practicing those basic beats after 10 years. I'm just trying to get a really steady good backbeat and you know start to be able to work my, my foot up and down and control the pitch of the drum you know uh, as I'm as I'm playing so I can uh, stuff just on mm. you know, my home recording project thing and uh, so yeah you could get really subtle 
and, and mic it up and, and capture that, but make it loud, but yeah, it's subtle. Yeah, and the samples really nice sound. Uh, is the other thing. So yeah. I had a few people come around, oh, can I get samples of these different <laughs> things for sure? Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's, that's awesome. Man. All right, dude, well, this is the one. Yeah. So thanks so much for this. Yeah, thanks. thanks so much for, for the interview. For around, hope you enjoy it. Guys, yeah. this is, um, this is, for me, this is like an absolute labour of love to, yeah. to come and well, sort of was, highlight this. It was a pleasure being with you, and I enjoyed it. Excellent, thanks. Well, see you later, guys. See you later.